In this lesson, we will learn how to work with 3ds Max's Curve Editor. Now, I've said it once and I'll say it again, the Curve Editor is probably our most important animation tool because it allows us to take our work from good to amazing. It gives us so much control over our keyframes. Let's go ahead and have a look at this Curve Editor editor. So we'll go ahead and grab our swivel control at the center of the turret. Let's go ahead and right click. And we can now choose the Curve Editor from our context menu, or we can go to the graph editors menu at the top and choose it. Sweet. What we have here over to our right is our work area that shows us our keyframes, our function curves, how we transition between each keyframe. And then notice when we select the key, we have access to its tangency. So you'll notice that if we were to left click and drag on our tangent, we're able to adjust our timing, adjust our poses without having to add any extra keys. So normally what I like to do after blocking in an animation is I like to see how far I can get with the tangent. And then if I absolutely need another key, I'll go ahead and add it at that point. That way we can keep things clean as much as possible. The last thing you want to do is create a key everywhere. And then when you jump into the curve editor, when it's time to clean things up, well, then that's when you realize the error in working such a way. Cool, so this is our work area. We can go to middle click to pan, hold down control alt, and drag with the middle mouse button. And what we get is more of an interactive zoom, which is great because sometimes we have to zoom in really close to a function curve to fix a problem that might not be noticeable from further away. So we can use this interactive zooming to get to those issues, those subtle changes that we have to make Sweet. Then from there, you'll notice that underneath the show menu, of course, we can go ahead and view our animated tracks by making sure animated is on underneath auto expand and auto select. That way they load up right here in our channels list. Also known as our animated tracks. All right, fantastic. So if we wanted to focus on the position Y track of the turret, we can go ahead and grab that. And now we're able to see only its keyframes. And this is something I really love because now we can just go ahead and focus on this channel without any other distractions. And let's go ahead and see what's happening in the position Z right now. That's our up and down axis. So if we were to go ahead and hit play, you'll notice that we have some pretty good weight and it kind of falls quickly. What if we wanted to slow this down? Well, we can start to take our keys and drag them. And what's great is that as we left click and drag, not only do we see the time that the key will rest on, but we'll also see the amount of offset that we've created by simply looking at the key's properties right there in our curve editor. So thank you 3ds Max for that. Also something to keep in mind is our key stats at the top. So we have access to a key's frame and value from here. And you could also use simple math to make changes. So for example, if we wanted to move this three more frames down, we can go to our frame stat and type in N plus three and enter. There you go, now we're on frame 32. Sweet. I'll go ahead and undo back though. Let's go ahead and bring the key back because I'd like to show you another way we can go ahead and stretch our timing. This way is not too practical. Instead, what we can do is work with the retime tool. So this will create anchors that we can use to start kind of stretching our timing. Let's go ahead and create an anchor at the beginning of the animation by simply double clicking. And then we'll create one at the end by again, double clicking. All right, sweet. So watch this. We can now go ahead and start to drag our timing. It's not going to update our timing until we choose bake to save these changes. Now, if you don't quite like the anchor, you could always just go ahead and trash it. Notice this X at the bottom. Once we click on it, it will revert back to where it was before, before we bake. Now with just one anchor, it's going to slide all keys. So do keep that in mind. We'll probably want to create one more and then go ahead and stretch our timing. Go ahead and bake it. And there you have it. Now you might notice that a few of our keys aren't displaying as the others are. You can see some have a wider, wider display and others they almost appear to be squished. When we see keys like this, that basically means that we have keys in between frames. 
That's not necessarily a bad thing. Sometimes we want those kind of keys if we're trying to create something that's very subtle, subtle change in our performance. But oftentimes it can be a bit challenging to work with keys like that because you don't quite know exactly where they are. So what you could do then is go ahead and grab a key and simply go ahead and move it to a whole frame. You'll notice that 3ds Max by default will go ahead and snap that keyframe to the next whole frame. Cool, so you might find that to be super helpful. Now once you're done with the retime tool, just go ahead and close it out. And there are your keyframes. So here's the change that we made. And again, we can go ahead and play this back. So you can see that it's going to fall a little bit slower now. Sweet. So again, that's a look at how to work with the retime tool. Something else I'd like to point out to you is how to clone your keyframes. It's really simple. It's just a matter of holding down shift and dragging. Now, if you would like to clone a key and restrict its movement so it can only move in either time or value, here's what you would do. You would hold down control and then shift and then drag. So by holding down control, we can either restrict the key's movement to only move in time as we drag left and right. Or as we drag up and down, we can lock the movement of the key to only move in value. So you might find that to be super helpful. And then if you don't need the key, of course, you can just go ahead and remove it by highlighting it and hitting delete on your keyboard. Neat stuff. So in this lesson, we learned about the curve editor here in 3ds Max. We also took a look at a really cool tool for retiming our animations. Now in the following lesson, I'd like to show you how to create a seamless cycle.